For this week's uh, Boss Shit segment, I definitely wanted to shout out Jasmine uh, for taking the time out to be on the episode and more importantly, just all of your hard work and dedication to healing our community. I know when I first started reading some of the articles where you're featured, I really love the fact that you saw there was a need in the space and then you reached out to the different studios in your area or the ones that you were already working with and how they kind of didn't see the importance, but you still never let any of that stop you because you knew like this was an amazing thing that all communities need. And especially with so many narratives on black women, I feel like when I saw your brand and your platform, I was just amazed that um, there was somebody catering to women that looked like me yeah. and trying to heal everything that we may go through and not talk about or experience on a day to day. So thank you so much for filling this space. How's this, how's it been for you thus far since you started? Um, we started, um, back in, oh my gosh, I'm like, what is time right now? <laughs> Um, I began and launched Black Girls Grieving at the end of 2018, and then we had our first in-person session at the beginning of 2019, but as far as making space in mental health, I had been doing this work um, and mindfulness, and that ranged from different universities and, you know, in my different speaking engagements where with college students and high school students and, um, you know, children in detention centers. Yeah. Uh, this work around mindfulness. So when I'd, I've always, not always, but I had been using breath work as a tool in my own practice for around four and a half years before it literally came to me in my spirit that I needed to get trained. And so mm-hmm. once I got my training, I was very clear who I was being pushed to um, serve. And yeah. I, you know, when I, when you asked me to join and I was looking up your work and looking up, listening to some, a few of your podcasts, um, I was just kind of like, you can tell, you can spot when, when people are going on the journey and taking those leaps of faith. And then like five years from now, who knows where you'll be. And I'm just kind of like, I see myself in her. So, um, that kind of, um, honestly, just seeing myself and so many of the women that we serve that, do not have the spaces for them to come to and don't feel seen. And even, I mean, there's other, you know, women of color platforms, but I felt like there was this bougie-ness of wellness. You know what I mean? Like, gosh, like pranayama and uh, and I'm just kind of like, who cares? Can you give me an inhale and exhale? And you under, and understanding how, you know, historically, certain things like knowledge is used to make us feel down and ashamed that we don't know, right? So when you go into wellness, Mm -hmm. someone who may have never gone to a meditation or something, if you're like, yes, do you know this person? And they're the guy, like, how would that make someone feel? You know what I mean? And that's common. You know, everyone wants to flex knowledge. And I just knew that that wasn't what I wanted to create. And so for me, um, what's been a joy is that our group isn't just millennials. You know, we have women who are in their 50s, 60s, 70s who attend our sessions. And that means so much to me because all generations of black women deserve to have a space where they can be seen and actively use a tool like breath work to heal the trauma that's in their body and mind and spirit and you know to feel feel not like you know um like it they're handing their power over so to speak like yeah sorry not like they're handing their power over so to speak you know like with oh a teacher you know like we bow down but in a space where it's just kind of like I make it clear like I am navigating the same day in day out things that you are you know this is my work Uh, I still feel the up and down of life myself I still you know have to walk through moments of anxiety and moments where I feel you know depressive energy like that's it's a part of human life the only thing I've done is, you know, practice with what tools do I need for myself in the moment right now and really owned in on myself, my body, what my body needs and trying to honor that. And that's the practice. And so I feel that we've created this space and and Black women don't feel when they come to the space, a sense of perfection, but a sense of practice. And that makes me really proud. 
Yeah, I know for me, I, um, I've been doing yoga like off and on. My mom's heavy into yoga when I was in high school. So I would go to the gym and do it with her. But I was always trying to, I found myself trying to like keep up with the poses instead of like taking my time and breathing and actually using it to relax and kind of get out of my own head. So when, with your work through breath work, can you tell people like a little bit about what breath work is for those that don't know that are listening? So breath work, when most people think meditation, they think more of a relaxing meditation and breath work is what I would describe as an active meditation. So it's work, right? So people, sometimes when they'll show up and they'll be like, oh my gosh, that was kind of intense. And I'm like, yes, an aspect of the work is intense because we are breathing for a certain amount of time very Mm -hmm. intentionally and, you know, very deeply. And then there is an aspect and a portion where we rest, but breath work is known for healing the nervous system, healing the triggers and traumas that live in the nervous system that then create physical ailments that we experience and even mental and emotional ailments. It's really good for helping us tap into our body, tap into where we're feeling emotions so we can process those emotions instead of sucking them down and allowing that energy to just take up space in our body and cause, you know, further turmoil or further heaviness and stuck energy. So that's really the the bulk of the work that breathwork does. It's a somatic tool, meaning it's a, a healing tool for the body. Um, trauma doesn't live in the mind, it lives in the body. So when we think about the things we've experienced in our life and even, you know, experiences from generations above us and how trauma is passed down through our DNA, the study of epigenetics, you know, when we look at that and as black women, as black people, we see all we've gone through and how that's impacted our bodies and our overall health. We use this tool of of breath work to help clear that energy and and help heal our nervous system that's usually chronically stressed, that's our adrenal glands are overworked and our cortisol levels are really high. And so knowing that, um, being intentional that this tool, which is very more, I wanna say, I don't wanna say alternative, but it's a tool that's, mostly known in LA and New York. And uh, for me being like, well, I'm going to bring this down to my community in a way that's accessible so they can access it and, and, and access the work in a way that's, um, that is, um, that resonates with them because, you know, like if you, if you were wanted to address maybe the microaggressions of the black woman that you face on the daily or things mm-hmm. like that, Sure. Um, you wouldn't go to a, re- a regular wellness class, a breathwork class is not going to address that, you know? Yeah. And if you wanted to even, you know, have individualized attention, you're looking at, you know, paying 150 to $300 for a session. And I don't think that's accessible for a lot of people, especially within our community. So um, making this work accessible and especially for us who need something to help yeah. process the traumas we deal with on a daily was the overall goal and how this work specifically affects us. Oh yeah. I love what you said about, um, like you in your body, you giving your body what you need and giving your mind what you need. And I think it was like, I never put two and two together until you just said it about how, our emotions live in our body instead of our minds like all the thoughts come through our mind but then just thinking about how how we feel and where we feel can cause like breast cancer or ovarian cancer like heart disease it's just kind of like oh I kind of like just had a light bulb and I was like oh that is right but I see how by you healing yourself, you're able to see that you want to heal your whole community and your loved ones and friends and family and like that. How has breath work been, how has breath work changed your life or maybe loved ones around you? Yeah. So for me, I found breath work in a time where um, my past life, I was working in brand marketing. I was in New York. I was 
um, working at a consumer products goods company on a global team in hair care. It was very fast paced work, mm -hmm. um, fresh out of school, NYU, and just the lifestyle of, of working like that um, causes mm -hmm. a lot of stress. And I was overly worked, over, over stressed, and I found breath work during a time where uh, the church I was, at, I was attending had launched a community center and the pastor's personal breath worker had started teaching classes and I started going and that's how I learned about the tool and for me it just allowed me to just honestly heal my body um, I was going through a personal situation at the time too that was very traumatic for me mm -hmm. and it just allowed me some space between the situation to attend to myself um, and you know, be fully aware and present in my body <laughs> versus in my mind of processing yeah. what was going on, which was a game changer because I don't think that I, I don't know if I would have survived that situation if I, I'm a very analytical thinker. So if I just was trying to process the complexities and the not making sense of that situation, yeah. um, instead of tapping into my body and my body saying like, this is, this is ending. You don't need too many reasons why, you know, why it didn't work. You don't need to know why someone would do something like that to you. That was so traumatic. Um, you can process this in your body and leaning into the wisdom of your body that felt safe and being like, okay, this is done. I think, you know, especially when we go through breakups and things that are grief related with relationships, mm -hmm. um, it, our mind wants to process the situation and our mind is the one that kind of got attached to the routine and this and that. So it's like when it severs, your mind is like, oh my gosh. And not to say that, you know, of course, like we're going to have that normal um, process of, you know, of moving through a situation like that. But when I was able to tap into my body, my body was just like more calm about it. You know, my body was like, yeah, see how you feel when you're no longer around them. And it's just like, yeah, this is mm -hmm. it's done and you feel better. And can you lean into that knowledge while you process this versus replaying back the facts and, you know, reading over texts and stuff like yeah. that. Like I just decided that, you know, I was just going to delete every, you know, text and this, I mean, the relationship was not based on truth. It was just all a lie. So I was just like, I don't need to go through the headache of trying to ask myself why or anything. I know that, you know, I did my best and I showed up in a truthful manner and I can't mm -hmm. control what anyone else does. So I'm going to decide to heal, you know, by being in my body and breath work was the tool that I used mostly during that time. And, um, yeah, that was for 2017. I mean, I leaned, it was a period of, elongated rest and really healing my body. I had gotten into a car accident like not long after that traumatic situation had happened. And um, I had like, I was so, you know, blessed the energy, the, um, the injuries that I got were just my shoulder had hurt and it was a five car pile up and oh you know what I mean? That's the yeah. only thing that happened. And I had gotten some prescription medicine, but I just was like, and you know, like to each his own, like this, I'm not a doctor, yeah. but um, I had just decided I was just going to take care of it and heal it naturally and give my body what I needed. And I did, I didn't take any of the prescriptions, um, not to say that there isn't a place for that because there is, I believe in, you know, supplementing with yeah. medicine when needed. Um, but yeah, that time period for me was a lot of breath work and other modalities that I just was trying to tap back into my body and, and give it what it needed at the time. I love that. So, so correct me if I'm wrong, breath work is like feeling, feeling the emotions in your body and knowing that it's not a mental thing. It, it, it does live like in our stomach or in our chest and our legs and having those, that practice of releasing it mm -hmm. through the breath. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Breath work is a tool that can release 
the stagnant energy and how it feels congested. You know, when something just happens to you that like your heart can physically hurt, you know, how tight it yeah. feels. Like, yeah. It's just like, okay, sitting with that emotion, but allowing the breath to give us some space and give it out going on in our body. Yeah. And just giving us a little bit more space around the incident or issue instead of feeling so closed off with it. Um, you know, and just working with the breath to help us help process emotions. It's not a one-stop quick fix. You know, this is a practice. That's the journey of healing in general. I don't, I don't promote anything that's like, do this and you'll feel like this. Like, yes, women have been coming consistently and they'll report like, oh my gosh, like when I went to the doctor, my blood pressure was down, Mm -hmm. you know, and you know, oh my gosh, like I have a chronic illness and I've been feeling a lot better since coming to the sessions. That does happen um, often. So yes, there, there are sometimes immediate physical um, relief that one can feel after doing it. Um, But in general, I just communicate how this is a practice and it's one that you can keep coming back to for when you need it. I was watching one of your videos when you were describing breathwork and doing it and I started doing it too. And by the end of the video, I was like, I gotta keep doing this. (laughs) So I'm still trying to like, I'm working, personally, I'm working on like, Um, just being able to get out of my mind for that second that time and then just everything that I've been seeing about black girls breathing and all the work that you're doing it kind of um, struck me as like this is something that I definitely need to take the time to learn and understand and put into a daily practice in my life because I do get um, so caught up on like the the little nuances of things and I'll just get stuck in my head and so many other Um, women that I know so I definitely love this platform but also like just the importance of feeling like a safe space you Mm -hmm. know where you can talk you can um, come together and practice this at the same time and not be like is my shirt pulled down am I doing this right like who's watching me I love that aspect completely so I wanted to kind of ask you about um, the workshop sessions that you do Um, What is that experience like? And I know at the end of the episode, I'll ask you, like, where can women find them? But um, can you describe the workshops a little bit? Yeah. So we are virtual breathwork circles. We have them twice a month. And um, we, they're, they last about an hour and 30 minutes get since COVID, uh, we would, before COVID, our breathwork circles would have like a theme of the month, but um, just given that a lot of our community were, was going through different range of things from grief to, you know, um, losing their jobs and feeling a sense of uncertainty and dealing with challenges related to this pandemic and then also the pandemic of being black in America, uh, we just have structured our circles to allow more conversation in the beginning before we begin with the breath work and then we close the session. Um, And it's just like, honestly, like, you know, it's people are feeling the safety of the space. And so there'll be different conversations happening in the chats or things like that. And um, that's, the bulk of or the gist of our sessions right now but we have a space to share where we hold space for each other um, and listening and you know allowing uh, each other to feel seen especially during a time where most of us aren't going out where we don't have regular contact with people so that that feeling of just being like okay for an hour and a half or more I feel connected to a group of women who look like me who are dealing with some of the same emotions and I don't feel alone. That's a sense of that a lot of women leave with on top of the benefits of breath work is that I don't feel alone and it just feels so good to be around other black women. Um, So yeah, I, um, yeah, that's kind of (laughs) our breath work circle. (laughs) That's awesome. Cause I do know like, um with all of us working from home it is nice like at work when I get to connect with other black women that I work with and it's just like I miss you guys I've missed talking to you it's just me in this house like can we do this every day every week um but how has like creating this whole community how has it affected uh your life personally and where do you kind of 
um, see it going? I, um, we're definitely excited about um, all the plans we have to expand our work. And once it's safe to do in-person sessions, we'll be going back on tour in 2021. We have some other things we're launching the, the, uh, this, not this month, it's still July, but in August and um, in the fall that we're excited about um, to keep, you know, the notion of healing in the body and somatic healing via breath work um, connected to all aspects of the work that we're doing. So we're expanding on that. And honestly, I mean, we're, it's, we're just one of those things where it's just kind of like following um, what's naturally flowing and, you know, growing our virtual breathwork circles, growing the um, accessibility that people have to our work. That's really huge for me now. We're crowdfunding in order to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, and I look forward to getting back to in-person sessions when it's safe. Um, Our virtual sessions are totally you know, uh, you experience, I can still feel people's energy when I'm doing leading. So it's not as if people feel disconnected versus in person. Um, but in person, you know, people are, can, you know, converse after the session with one another and that there's this sense of like, oh, wow, I was just in this space and did all this healing work with all these other women. This was so powerful. So I I look forward to, yeah, I look forward to I'm going to stay tuned. I'm yeah. going on my phone now to, for August session. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, our mission is to always have spots available for those who are financially strained. And so we'll always be doing that with our virtual sessions. I'm committed to that. So that's what's in the works for us. Yeah. And we share one thing in our journey that um, we're excelling in or it's going well. And then one thing in our journey that we're still working on. Mm. Um, so I can go first if you want. Yeah, go. go I know, for it. Um, mm. Succeeding is um, I bec- over the past maybe year or so. I've been getting uh, just working more so on my mental mm. and my confidence in everything that I'm, everything that I put out, work or being of uh, this platform, and I've become a lot very self aware to know. Uh, when I'm sad, when I know I have an attitude, when I'm bothered, or when something is getting on my nerves. So it's going well to be self-aware about it, and I'm able to start, you know, processing the thoughts. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I'm working on is I do want to incorporate just those times for me to take care of my body, like having time to just sit and meditate, sit and learn more about breath work, Mm. Um, to really become like the vision of myself that I see in my head Mm -hmm. I know like it is definitely the time to invest more in that part of my life Mm -hmm. and I just think about how how much further I can go once I am like 100% comfortable 100% able to like be aware of something and work through the process like you're saying Mm -hmm. yeah I love that I would I would offer if you're open to it um, that you don't need to have it a hundred percent all the way. There's no such thing. You know, you don't need to have it all together to step, step into all the way in the, your purpose. Or, I mean, you've already launched this platform. So that's, that's a lot, you know, like mm-hmm. give yourself a pat on the back for that, for launching your platform, for being consistent with putting out your work, something you created that oh, you yeah. in, imagined and envisioned. And then you took the steps. That's huge. So uh, if anything, I guess, and not, I guess, but if anything in my journey um, that I would say I'm succeeding in, I, for me, I'm succeeding in being open. I think there's, um, I've been saying that I think it's more powerful to be open than it is to be specifically trying to manifest a certain thing. Um, You'll hear all the time people like, I never imagined I would be here. Um, And it's just kind of like, yeah, because even with our big, you know, the dreams we have in our brains, um, like that can be <laughs> expanded upon yeah. in a month. Like, I mean, just this pa- the past two months, like I didn't expect for us to have all that coverage in a span of six weeks. You know, I didn't expect 
ex I didn't expect for our business to grow in the way that it has and our community to grow in the way that it has in the past six weeks. And that's because I just feel like I was aligned. I was walking in my purpose and what I was, you know, listening to God and my spirit on what I needed to do. And then, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was open to it because I couldn't envision this, but when it came, you know, I was able to receive it and to yeah. follow, you know, and not like go through the whole thing of like, oh, I don't know if I'm good enough. And I don't know. Yeah. And yet there are moments during these, these challenging, like growing pains where I'm just kind of like, oh my gosh, like, oh, this is hard. Managing a team is hard. Trying like all of these things. I, that is what I'm working through right now, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel as far as building a team that, you know, furthers our mission, is excited and passionate about everything and that matters. And so I've, if I would say what's one thing I'm excelling at, I think it would be being open to all mm -hmm. the possibilities and that are coming to me right now and all the opportunities. And a challenge is just um, staying, keeping that openness and also yeah. trusting that I have everything I need as I experience some of these growing pains and challenges. Oh yeah, I know. I'm also. I've always wanted a um, bit of person that I wanted control. Yeah. So with me, what's your sign? Pisces. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, um, I now like tell myself, and people tell me like, just be open to whatever. It's like, okay, I'm practicing my open. Like I'm open. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on in. Yeah. So I'm definitely. That's also one thing that I have been working on for a while. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to thank you so much for this episode. Thank you for all of your knowledge and what you're doing. Um, definitely people need to make sure they check out for these monthly sessions. I know you said there's spots open for everybody. Yes, and we have a sliding scale. So you can opt in from zero to $25. We just ask that people are intentional um, and signing up for the, the rate you can afford and leaving you know, the lower weights for those who really, really need it right now. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have that two times a month. August sessions are the 6th and the 23rd. Mm -hmm. And we always announce when the no cost slots are open. And so people are able to sign up for that if they want to. Um, you can go to Black Girls Breathing. You can go to our our Instagram profile, Black Girls Breathing, and you'll see the link in our bio to sign up for our sessions and you'll have more information or you can go straight to our website, blackgirlsbreathing.com and go to offerings and you'll see the sessions, the upcoming sessions. So those are the ways that people can, can tangibly tap into the work and they can also just follow us on our socials to see what's happening in our world. Oh yeah, and I'll have all of that linked in the video and on um, our social media for this episode, but thank you guys so much for listening. Um, but thank you guys for listening and I'll see you guys next week.